When researching screen types for a new TV or phone purchase or whatever, figuring out which selection hits the right price to performance ratio for one's needs can be enough to drive prospective buyers insane. And apparently some companies didn't think we'd gone mad enough, so they've introduced a new style which uses a little other things called quantum dots to increase performance over standard LCDs while undoubtedly increasing standard prices as well. Now modern LCD screens are made up of blue LED backlights that have had a layer of yellow phosphorus added to them, which causes their emitted light to turn from blue to white. This white light is then filtered through red, green, and blue subpixels at varying intensities, creating the end color of a pixel of, you know, whatever shade of magenta floats your boat set in an entire array of them. And while this design enabled us to create a wide range of colors at pretty darn fast refresh rates, the style of white backlighting that they deployed made their color recreation, especially for reds, a little bit on the weaker side. And this is where the use of quantum dots in LCD screens comes in. QD LCD screens also start with a blue layer of backlighting, but instead of using phosphorus to turn the light white, red and green fluorescent nanocrystals are used. These nanocrystals range from about one and a half to a little over four nanometers in size and actually emit light instead of just filtering it. So when the light of the blue LED causes the red and green dots to illuminate, it creates a purer white than before. This purer light is able to more efficiently pass through the subpixel filters, allowing engineers to create screens which require less operation energy to achieve increased spectrum ranges, or in other words, colors are able to be brighter, and more vibrant, all while the screen is using less juice. But while quantum dot LCD screens boast a wider range of colors compared to their regular LED backlit predecessors, that does not automatically make them the new king of the rainbow castle. Quite a few people who have seen them in action still testify to the superior image quality of OLED screens. This would be largely due to their ability to shut off individual pixels, creating much darker blacks and giving them this like massive contrast ratio. There are also a lot of people who are questioning the ability of the initial run quantum dot screens to handle motion blur properly at higher refresh rates, leading many to wonder why this technology is even being implemented in the first place. The answer, of course, is money, as if it was ever anything else. Like I previously explained, QD LCDs operate at lower energy costs than their competitors, making them highly attractive to anyone who wishes to reduce power consumption. And then the other big upside to them is that the the production costs of quantum LCD panels can reportedly range anywhere from as low as half to a third of an OLED screen, making them extremely attractive to manufacturers as well as budget-minded consumers. Because the simple fact of the matter is that while there's going to be the tech geeks out there that are like, OMG, they put the word quantum in it, I need seven, most consumers already have screens capable of displaying content meant to be viewed at the standard of 60 hertz or below and don't generally seem to be interested in forking out huge sums of money for OLEDs in which they may see very minimal benefits. And if you cross-section like those guys with the people who are interested in reducing energy costs, expanding battery life on mobile devices, and potentially potentially driving the purchasing cost down of their next upgrade, then you arrive at this group of people that might find quantum dot LCD technology very, very appealing because while it's not gunning for the top dog spot with OLED as a stopgap solution until prices fall on OLED or new technologies are developed, it seems pretty compelling. Speaking of things that are compelling, especially if you're a freelancer or a small business owner, FreshBooks. It's a cloud accounting service designed with, you know, people who want to spend their time doing their work and not spend all their time doing a bunch of like paperwork and nonsense and reconciliations in mind. It makes invoicing, getting paid, and tracking expenses easier. They've got an online tool that helps you get your accounting done quickly. And I mean, they've got all kinds of cool stuff. So like they make invoicing simple. Your clients can pay you online, which is really neat. Your expenses are automatically tracked as you spend and all the little details about cash flow are in one place. And you can even do things like log hours. So you just update your 
FreshBooks timesheet from your phone, and then it goes, boop, okay, project hours, that goes right into an invoice. You send that to the client, and as I mentioned before, you can go ahead and they can pay it online. So if you're your own boss, you should be using stuff that makes you feel like a boss, and FreshBooks is an easy way of getting all that stuff done online so you can do what you need to be doing, which is the work that you need to be doing. So head over to freshbooks.com slash techquickie, and don't forget to enter techquickie in the how did you hear about us section. Linus would also be acceptable. Thanks for watching, guys. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it just plain sucked. Leave a comment under the video if you you know, had a suggestion for a future Fast as Possible episode just like this one. Don't forget to check out our other channels, Linus Tech Tips, and a channel Super Fun where we have lots of like super fun stuff going on. I think that's pretty much it. Don't forget to subscribe and follow if you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you guys again next time.